DreamWorks Kung Fu Panda is an action-packed comedy that pays tribute to the kung fu genre, and there are easter eggs and behind-the-scenes secrets to be revealed. Ready? Fight! Kung Fu Panda follows Po, a panda and lowly noodle shop employee with a passion for kung fu, and he's voiced by the super-animated Jack Black. Po becomes the unlikely prospect for the title Dragon Warrior, a title even his idols strive to achieve. From the opening scene, we see Po fantasize about becoming a trusted ally of his idols, known as the Furious Five. Take a close look at them. The team is made up of a crane, a mantis, a monkey, a tiger, and a snake. These seem like arbitrary animals, but if you know kung fu, you know that their styles of the martial art modeled after each of these animals. There's even a bear style for Po, and there's more hidden in this opening scene. Kung Fu Panda might mostly pull from Chinese culture, but Poe's dream right from the beginning of the film is an homage to Japanese anime. Directors Mark Osborne and John Stevenson are big fans of the genre. They also wanted the opening sequence to look decidedly different from the rest of the CG animated film, so the opening scene as well as the end credits were hand-drawn. If you love martial arts movies, you've come to the right place. Kung Fu Panda was produced by filmmakers who were greatly influenced by martial arts movies particularly the contemporary classics Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon, Hero, House of Flying Daggers, and most fittingly, the action comedy Kung Fu Hustle. Though films are a great source to draw from, more inspiration for Kung Fu Panda was found in the first-hand experience of the filmmakers and performers themselves. Poe's father is a goose and owns the noodle shop. He's voiced by seasoned actor James Hong, who you might remember from such classic films as Big Trouble in Little China, Blade Runner, or more recently as the voice of Mr. Gao in Disney's Turning Red. Hong must have felt right at home in this role, because his real-life father also owned a noodle shop, where he often worked when he was younger. In fact, it was after the filmmakers learned about this that they made it part of his character. And there's more examples of the movie drawing on real-life inspiration. Watch the scene where Poe enters the Jade Palace and beholds all the amazing relics before him. This moment is actually based on director Mark Osborne's experience of getting to see inside George Lucas's Skywalker Ranch. In the film's commentary track, Osborne says, I was up at the Skywalker Ranch once, and I was creeping around inside the main house and looking at all the artifacts, you know, the lightsaber, Indy's hat, and I just remembered being terrified that at any moment someone was going to come in and go, you're not supposed to be here. I think it's kind of funny now that I'll see that played out as a panda. Production designer Raymond Zeebak and art director Tong Kang Hung spent several years researching Chinese art and kung fu movies, and they weren't alone. Even the animators took kung fu to get an idea of the movie's action. All this research seemed to pay off. It impressed Chinese audiences so much that there were government meetings to discuss why their own country had not produced the same quality of animated movies. Sure. Poe is the titular character of Kung Fu Panda, but he's not the only Kung Fu Panda in the film. Confused? Take a closer look at Master Shifu, voiced by acting great Dustin Hoffman. Yeah, he might look like a fox, but Master Shifu is actually a red panda, which is native to China. But did you know that the red panda isn't even that closely related to the black and white giant panda? They actually have more in common with raccoons, even if they do look like a tiny cute version of a giant panda. But more on Shifu the kinda not really panda master. Shifu is tasked by his elder, Master Ugwe, to train Po to become the dragon warrior he is destined to be. But Master Ugwe, played by Randall Duck Kim, tells Shifu he had a vision of the imprisoned Tai Lung's return. Tai Lung, voiced by Ian McShane, is Shifu's closest protege turned most dangerous adversary. In the scene where Shifu sends Zeng to the prison to strengthen security, pay close attention to Master Ugwe's words. He mentioned that many destinies are fulfilled in the attempts to avoid them. Tai Long would not have been able to escape if Zhang hadn't gone to visit in the first place, since it's Zhang's loose feather that sets things in motion. Tai Long is kept in Chorgam Prison, a prison made literally just for him and the 1,000 guards that keep watch over him. Take a good look at Tai Long when he's introduced. Notice anything interesting? He's kept sedated under a tortoise shell guard. This is a fun little bit of foreshadowing as we later learned that Master Ugwe was the one who defeated and subdued him. And there's more foreshadowing you may have missed. After Poe gets destroyed by the Furious Five on his second day of training, Mantis tends to him rather unsuccessfully with acupuncture, a traditional Chinese therapy involving the use of needles. Mantis says the treatment isn't working well because it's too hard to find the right nerve points under all of Poe's heavy layers. Be sure to remember this detail. It's not just another jab at Poe's expense. It's actually his saving grace and a key to explaining why in the final battle, Poe is immune to Tai Lung's nerve attack, which took down all the members of the Furious Five. 
Of course, Poe has a long way to go before that showdown. One of the most impressive action sequences in Kung Fu Panda is the rope bridge fight scene. When directors Mark Osborne and John Stevenson brought the concept to the animators, the team protested because they had no clue how to create such a complex sequence. Surprisingly, the directors took this as great news. To them, it was a sign that nothing like that sequence had been done before, which made them all the more determined to see it through. Sometimes a movie has a bunch of Easter eggs and sometimes the movie is the Easter egg, and that's the case here. Kung Fu Panda is featured in the 2009 DreamWorks movie Monsters vs. Aliens. During Galaxar's broadcast, pay close attention to the Tokyo audience. The surrounding buildings are filled with signs and billboards. If you look up and to the right, above the lady with the bun and glasses, you'll see a still of the scene from Kung Fu Panda, where Po tells Master Shifu he's not hungry. This next hidden secret is just for you Jackie Chan fans. Once Master Shifu discovers that food is the secret motivation to unlocking Po's potential, the real training begins. In one scene, Shifu and Po spar with chopsticks over Pao, a Chinese steamed stuffed bun. This scene should look very familiar to fans of Kung Fu classics and Jackie Chan. It's an homage to a chopstick fight in Jackie Chan's 1979 flick The Fearless Hyena. Also, did you happen to notice the voice of Monkey? It's none other than the master himself, Jackie Chan. And did you know that according to his online diary, Jackie Chan said he was able to record all his lines during one five-hour recording session? According to his account, it took place in Los Angeles on October 15, 2007. This may not seem too hard to accomplish until you factor in that he also recorded his lines for the Mandarin and Cantonese versions of the movie as well. If there's one sound that's music to a movie buff's ears, it's the Wilhelm scream, a sound effect first recorded in the 1951 movie Distant Drums that keeps popping up in all of our favorites. Perk up your ears when Tai Lung escapes prison. He hits a rhino guard with a mace in his mouth. Then he flings the guard into the air. When he finally kicks the guard through another guard and the door, that's when you hear it. Like sweet, sweet music. Speaking of sweet, Master Ugwe and Master Shifu get into an intense discussion over the training of Po, and more broadly, the nature of destiny. This takes place at the foot of the sacred peach tree of heavenly wisdom. The animators chose a peach tree because in Chinese culture, it symbolizes immortality. Peach blossoms and peach tree leaves are used in Taoist magic, which is fitting symbolism for Master Ugwe. He moves on to his ethereal state using these elements. Also, did you notice Ugwe's staff is made from wood of the peach tree? Legend has it the wood has the power to ward off evil. But there's more to the evil Tai Lung. The filmmakers needed to make Tai Lung more evil. In early drafts, the snow leopard continually seemed too sympathetic as the villain of the story. This is how Tigress's storytelling sequence came to be, as it greatly develops Tai Lung's betrayal of Shifu and his vicious rampage after being denied the Dragon Scroll. Of course, there is the flip side to every coin. Did you know that Poe's character also had to be refined to make him more sympathetic? In collaboration with voice performer Jack Black, the writers were better able to shift Poe from an awkward and unpleasant kung fu fanboy to a sweet panda who loves martial arts, but is also sadly self-conscious. Poe might have had the audience's sympathy, but he has a lot of work to do in order to gain sympathy from Master Shifu. During Poe's acupuncture, Viper, voiced by Lucy Liu, claims that there was a time when Master Shifu actually used to smile. File that away until the POW training sequence. Don't blink or you'll miss it. In this scene, if you pause just right, not only will you catch Shifu stealing Poe's POW, but you will see him smiling directly at you. I guess breaking the fourth wall is a little easier than breaking boards. At least we don't have to work as hard as Poe to gain Master Shifu's favor. Pay attention to Shifu's treatment of Poe as the movie progresses. For most of Kung Fu Panda, Shifu calls Poe Panda, which jives with the way he refers to the Furious Five, identifying each member by their animal type. But during the sequence where Poe is finally given the Dragon Scroll, a shift happens. Poe asks Master Shifu if he really believes he's ready, to which Shifu replies, You are, Poe. This isn't only a big step for Poe, but for Shifu as well. He's truly beginning to trust in the words of Master Ugwe, and he can once again open his heart to his students, a part of himself that he closed off after Tai Lung's betrayal. Aside from Poe, Shifu and Tai Lung are the only other characters who get to behold the contents of the Dragon Scroll. Funny enough, adopted father and son have similar reactions. They both look at the scroll sideways and try folding it and opening it again. In the argument of nature versus nurture, mark one point for nurture. I hope you liked the video and found some things in Kung Fu Panda that you hadn't seen before. Make sure you subscribe to Movie Logic for more daily movie facts, trivia, and Easter eggs. Skadoosh!